Hi guys, I really appreciate you joining me today. I am so honored um, within the past few weeks especially that my videos are going up slightly. I'm so glad, both here and on YouTube. And as usual for the past two weeks, I will put this one up on YouTube when I'm done. So YouTube will get the same kind of treatment. Uh, we'll get the same kind of videos. And eventually, I will put all the videos here, even my past ones, up on YouTube. So that everybody will get, will, will get them. But that will take me a while. Um, but I will do it eventually, a little at a time, until every video from here is on YouTube, and every YouTube video is shared on Facebook. So between the two platforms, um, which is really good. Anyway, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do, and I thank you for what you're about to share through me. Use me, use my body in whatever way you see fit. Let my words be few and your words be many. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, hi guys. Um, oh my god, there's a lot to chew on this week. Um, First of all, I've got to tell you about the Kirk Franklin documentary. Now, I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon too much because there are a lot of videos out there, a lot of reaction videos out there. This is not going to be a play-by-play -play reaction or whatever. But just let me say, if you haven't seen it, go over to YouTube type in Father's Day Kirk Franklin documentary. And s s let me tell you that seeing this thing will change your life. You will get something out of it, whether it be fatherlessness, whether it be dealing with out of order family members or whatever, you will get something out of it. His story, like he said, he said in the documentary, his story is our story. And it just, I've been obsessed with it. I've watched it probably uh, two or three times because it's just so touching. And I know Kirk Franklin won't be watching this video or whatever. But if he was, I would say, what many people haven't said, they've been focused on the drama and the gossip and whatever, but nobody has said this, and I will say it. Congratulations, Kirk. You found your daddy. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Congratulations to you and Tammy. And I hope as you build the relationship, uh, trust and love will just develop. And remember, it takes time. It's, it so takes time. So give it the time to, to blossom and develop. And, and, uh, and don't let fear, I know this is hard, but don't let fear stop you from having a great relationship with Mr. Rick. It's going to be so wonderful for you. And it's going to have its ups and downs, challenges. But remember that although you didn't have your biological father, You've always had a father that loves you and that that cares for you and, and he set you up and I'm so 
happy for you and so proud of you. And regarding your mom and your aunt, sometimes oh, we have to all go through our own processes, and, you know, our own journeys to get to uh, what we need to get to. So just leave them uh, to get through their to their own journey and understand that that reaction from your mother and from your aunt that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with them and, and their own journey and their own mistakes and their own whatever they've been through in their life. That has nothing to do with you. And I'm so glad that Although they're your family, you put up boundaries. You said, if you cannot give me the truth, I don't need to uh, to associate myself with you. And oftentimes, and this is for everybody, oftentimes we think because somebody's family, we need to constantly open up ourselves to hurt and pain. But we don't. We don't. Nobody deserves to hurt us and constantly misuse us and abuse us because they call themselves mom, dad, or cousin, or whatever. If somebody's misusing you and abusing you, you don't have to let them into your life until they can prove that they can treat you with respect and have the the decency to tell you the truth. And, and sometimes truth is hard to, for people to come to because they're embarrassed and they have their own journey. But that doesn't mean you have to stay around and get abused because they are going through their own journey. No. So oftentimes it's best to separate from those detrimental people because what happens is their dysfunction rubs off on you and you start feeling dysfunctional and you don't have the right to be hurt, mistreated, abused emotionally, spiritually, sexually, financially, in any way. God has made you too important for that. So I'm so happy that Kirk Franklin put up boundaries and said, if you if you can't give me this, know, know what you're worth and have your expectations um, and set your boundaries. He said, if you cannot give me the truth, there's nothing to talk about. And I'm, and I'm so glad for that. Um, and watching this documentary and watching the reactions, um, some reactions were good, some reactions were all about the gossip, but I'm just happy uh, he found his biological father and I, and I pray that love just flow in that relationship. Uh, That relationship won't heal all the wounds, but I pray that it starts to heal um, some of the wounds at least. And just know, Kirk Franklin, it was never you. It was always them and the adults around you who should have shielded you who should have loved you, 
they dropped the ball. You didn't. But saying that now you have a choice. Are you going to let what they did hold you from a, a wonderful relationship with, with Mr. Rick? Or are you go, going to embrace the, the love that um, God is now opening up for you? Sometimes we don't have a choice of what the, when we're children, we don't have a choice of what the adults around us do, but when we become adults ourselves, we can choose how we respond and how we react and how we take the information that we know and move forward. And I pray that God guide Kirk Frick in, in his journey with his dad. And I pray for the love and the grace and the peace that he needs to move forward. You can't wait for other people to change. What you can do is go towards change yourself. We spend so much time waiting for other people to change when what we need to do is go towards change ourselves. And another thing I've been thinking about on, on a completely different matter is just um, how we think this moment is so dark and things are going so downhill. But I feel the Lord saying it's actually the brightest moment in history. If you look behind the smoke screen and if you can look um on what God is doing. He's doing so much wonderfulness in the background that we can't see. And and he wants me to tell you guys out there that he's got you. He's got this. And no matter how dark it looks, he's got this and he will forever I've got this, and like, the devil would like to fool us to say, oh my gosh, the world is so dark, the financial downturn is real and everything, and I'm not saying that that stuff isn't going on, it is, but I'm saying behind the curtain. God is raising up a generation like never before. Behind the curtain, God is raising up a, a people that will serve him, that will love him. And he's using, I've said this before in previous videos, he's using uncommon means. I can see the church future so bright if we would just ask the Lord what he wants to do in this moment and stop pretending that we know if we would just break away from what we think um, is church what we think is God and say God have free reign. We we say that. We say God do what only you can do and have take us and use us. But what we really mean is take us and use us in our in our parameters, in our church services, in our in the ways that we feel comfortable. 
at this moment in history, it's a, it's like Charles Dickens, it's the best of times and it's the worst of times. But for the best of times to show through, we need to let him take total control. And God taking total control can find kind can sound kind of good, but it is scary as and anything. And because we don't know what he's going to do. But if we would just say, God, take over and really mean take over, he would wreck this world so bad. What I mean by wreck this world, I don't mean in a bad way. He would surprise us. He would, he would destroy all our preconceived notions of him he would use people that that we wouldn't even think of and he would do things yes he can do that he can still do that he still can use any anyone he wants or whatever but if we would just let go of the reins, let go of control. And he says, yes, I understand that it's scary, but I I need you to trust me. In this moment, for him to do what he needs to do, um, he wants us to trust him. He doesn't need us to trust him. He can do whatever he wants at whatever time. But he wants us to trust him and know that he loves this world as much as we do, that he loves our children as much or more than we do. And he and he understands the purpose in, in us. I think I'm seeing a whole new future for the church. I'm seeing him wrecking the way we do sermons. Him wrecking the way we do worship songs. Uh, Like the different kinds of styles of music and integration of styles of music. I'm seeing all these innovative things going on. But we have the reins too tight. We have our structure too tight. We we like our structure, our church structure, our family structure, our structure, the structure that we've created so much that he doesn't have room to do what we're asking for. We're like, Lord, use us. We're like, Lord, break us open. But we're so focused on the way we do things that he can't tear us open. If the Lord, if (laughs) um, the the pandemic is a great example. When we were all at home and whatever, um, we just went through church as usual wouldn't have like we preached empty buildings and we went online and it was it was kind of innovative but I could really sense at that moment that God wanted us to break open and in that we couldn't even break open because we're so married to what we think church is supposed to be. We're so married to what we think ministry is supposed to be. We are so married to what we what we want this to be that when someone new comes along, we say, no, no, that's not God. That's not ministry. But it is. God is changing the game. God wants to change the way, the way we do church, 
the way we write songs, the way we, the instrumentation we use. He wants us to, he wants to turn, he wants us to turn it upside down, but we're too afraid to. We're too afraid to. And what we under, what we need to understand is, um, he loves this world more than we could ever love this world. And he loves his bride more than we could ever love his bride. He, he's like, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to say something that he just dropped in my spirit. <laughs> and it's going to sound really weird. But in this context, it works. Remember how I said we're so married to the way we do life. We're so married to the way um, we do church. We're so married to the way we work in our personal lives. We're so married to our routines. He said, it's time to get a divorce. Um, and it's funny because, uh, yes, we say God hates divorce in a in a human marital context, yes, he certainly does hate divorce. But in this context, when it comes to divorcing the way we think things should be, he's all for it. The way we think life should operate, whatever, he says, it's time to get a divorce. And I think, I'm sensing that that is the title of this. Um, <laughs> um, he wants to do so much. I'm seeing so much that he wants to do, but we're so married to this is how church is supposed to run. Uh, we sing for we sing we stick to our liturgy and then we do our sermon and then we do the prayer and then we go home he wants to break us wide open like i'm serious he wants to do things that he's never done before but we need to understand we need to be brave enough to say that, Lord, what do you want us to do? We don't know what to do. And there's a way to reach this generation that we haven't even tapped into before. And, you know, the, um, the people that we call disruptive thinkers, he said, that's not even the tip of the iceberg. He said, I want to do so much, but you need to divorce your plans. You need to divorce your the way you do things, the way you've done things for years. He said, you know, it's time to get a divorce from your plans, whatever, and just start a new, a something totally new. He wants to, he wants to shake up our design for church. He wants to shake up our, a design for our lives. But, but we won't let him. He's saying, I need you to let me shake up this and know that I got this. Know that I will, I will never steer you wrong. He wants us to have our ears to the ground and to understand that he, we, we say this all the time when we jump for joy, but we have no idea what it means. That he is doing a new thing in our lives and he totally wants to flood the world with his presence. And he wants to do it in, in unique ways. Like, um, 
people came up with this and because it worked for some people, we think it's the way to go. When I say people came up with this, people came up with certain ways of doing church. Uh, people came up with the certain ways to write worship music. People came up with certain ways to do that. And he wants to break it wide open. And he said, are you open to 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 separating from what you think you know? And it is phenomenal. I love what the Lord is doing. I see so much. I see sermons being more communicative than people talking at people. And I see I see I see um uh just just the Lord destroying the way we do things things, but in his destroying the way the church do does things people will be even more flooding the church. I see I see millions of people coming to the church if we just let him in to do what he wants to do. And I just see it. Oh my gosh. I see a lot of things just changing. I hear us the sound of worship like you wouldn't believe. I hear the sound of preaching like you wouldn't believe, but it's not preaching like we do now. Uh, there are, like, I hear different styles of preaching. People uh, using art in their sermon, using music in their sermon. And I'm not talking about just the organ. I'm talking about actual songs in the sermon. I'm, I'm seeing people uh, using stories and songs in their sermon. Just, just different ways to communicate the gospel. It's just, I'm seeing all this stuff. And it, it, it just keeps me up at night because I'm like, Lord, why me? He's like, I need you to share this message. And I'm just so grateful because the Lord wants to flood the earth with his glory. But we're the dam that's stopping him from doing so. Um, we don't, no, when I say stopping him, nobody could stop him from doing what he wants to do, but saying that, he's also a gentleman and he will invade. He'll only invade as far as we, we kind of not allow him, but as far as we give him permission, not give him permission. I'm not saying this right. He can invade, but he often doesn't and won't because we won't, we're, we're too married to what we think this is supposed to be. And I can tell you that he wants to, uh, right, right now, there are little kids with little seven-year-olds with wonderful ideas for sermons and how to spread the gospel. But the adults in their lives are like, no, 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 we don't do that in church. No, 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 we don't do that in church. Right now, there are pastors with creative energy and creative vision. And they're already, uh, some of them are already well known, but they're too afraid to step out because they're like, what if I do this and people are not receptive to it? 
and you know, God is showing you different ways to do things, and you're like, nope, I can't do that, because that will just interrupt everything, and my staff will think I'm absolutely insane, and the Lord is saying, do it, he's saying, you've been fighting, the world only knows half of what I put in you. And you've been fighting me for so long. He's been saying, you've been saying, I've been saying, I want you to do this. I want you to preach like that. And you're like, oh my gosh, but the congregation will not accept that as preaching. I will be kicked off of YouTube and whatever. You won't. It will start a revolution that you would not believe. It will start an outpouring of the gospel, which you never believe. Stop fighting your gifts. Stop fighting your gifts. There are there are people, not only pastors, but pastors too, there are people that are operating in safe gifts. The gifts that they know that the world will respect. And so they operate in those gifts. But the Lord wants me to tell you, there is more inside of you. And you know the more, and you know some of the more that he's shown you, but you refuse to operate in that gift because it's not really churchy or it's too far or whatever. Take your, your limits off of God. Those are your limits, not his. And, and there is so much more deep inside of you. You know what I'm talking about. You know the kind of things that the Lord is showing you. And, and you're, you may not be saying it out loud, but, you're, but, you're, uh, but your mind is saying it. No, no, I can't do that. That's not a proper sermon, or that's not a way to write a song, or I can't mix those styles of music together. I just have to stay in what is considered worship music. No, you don't. <laughs> Tear it down. Tear your walls down. Tear your creative walls down. The Lord is saying, Tear your walls down and let me come in and trust me that I won't I won't wreck this thing. And he's saying, what you're doing now is good. It's really good. But he's saying, you know I am more inside of you. I've been speaking to you for months and you've been too afraid. He's like, there's a time to be afraid, but now is the time to step out on faith. He's like, there's a time to be afraid and cautious and do research. He's like, but now is the time to step out on faith. Like, there is... There are wells. There are deep wells of knowledge. Deep wells of wisdom. Deep wells of music. Deep wells of art. Deep wells of understanding in my people, but they're too afraid to walk in them because they're new and different. Walk in it and know that I go, go with you. Walk in it and know that I stand by you. Walk in it and know that I love you. Walk in it and know that I am here for you. You know what we'll share about. And through that gift that you are afraid to walk in, 
I will heal nations. I will restore lands. I will I will break the back of the enemy on your behalf. You just have to believe me. You just have to believe me. And he's saying right now, there is no time for faith. There is time for faith. He's like, it's time to stop coasting. He's like, sometimes in our jobs, in ministry, in what we do, sometimes we coast. We just do what we do and coast and don't challenge ourselves. And we're like, this is good. But he's like, it's time to stop coasting. He's like, I need you. I need you to ask for the passion again. I need you to ask for the fire again. I want you to feel the fire of me again. I want you to feel the passion again. The church is is growing and restoring, but he's saying at the same time, many people are falling away because they're losing their fire and they're losing their passion. It's like a stale marriage that you don't work on the relationship. When you start dating, you do all, you do everything to get the, to get the girl or guy. And then when you get them and then you marry them and then you move in together and have, have kids, the passion starts to wane because the kids come and whatever. He's like, I need you to rekindle your passion for me. He's like, I need my bride to rekindle her passion for me. And I need the church to get back to me. I need the church to get back to me and what I want. Not what they think I want. Not, not what they've been doing for years. And it, will, it works, so we'll continue doing it again. But I need you to ask me what changes you need to make or what do you need to adjust. In any kind of relationship, um, I've been told, I'm not married, but I've been told that you need to make adjustments. I heard one pastor say, my wife is not the same person that I wa- that she was when I married her. And if, and if I was so married to the person that she was, I wouldn't be enjoying the person that she is now. And what we've done is we've married one aspect of God, and then we've just stayed with that aspect of God, and we've run our ministries with that aspect of God. And God doesn't change, but our revelation of him our depth and our understanding of him does. And he says that I want that understanding to flow not only in your private life, but I want it to go in your ministry. I want to be consulted because I want to do things differently in your life and in your ministry. Uh, He's like, I need you to make reassessments in your life and in your ministry. He's like, you've been coasting for too long. You've been coasting with those kids for too long. He's like, you've been getting so bored. He's like, you're doing the right things. You're going to work. You're getting up your... You're serving in your church, you're, 
you're doing all those things. He's like, but you're you're outwardly busy, but you're internally bored. He's saying you are outwardly busy, but you're internally bored. Like you're outwardly doing doing the things that you should be doing, but you're internally bored. You're internally wondering what's next. And he's saying, you need to let me into those what next, what's next places. And you need to start asking in your life for your church, for your ministry, for your kids, what's next. He's like, you need to let me into those what what's next places. Oh, this is wonderful. Because I can see, I see a birthing of different, of different things that the Lord wants to do. I see a birthing of different styles of ministry. I see, a, I see some ministries going more creative. Um, like the way of using arts and music in their sermons. I see some ministries going more, um, uh, like intellectual. You, uh, where the pastor is so into science or whatever. I see people using pets in their sermons, whatever their passions are. As long as it leads people to Jesus and to the cross, he's like, I can use it. Just open, just take the limits off and give your ministry and give your life to me and let me, uh, let me take it over. He's like, Sometimes we give our spirit, spirit and souls and hearts to the Lord, um, but we don't give our lives to the Lord. Like, we don't give all our lives to the Lord. We give some of our lives to the Lord. But I'm telling you, if we were to give it all over without any, you can go here, here but not here. You can go here, but not here. I can sense that the Lord really wants to do a work here, and I'm just so um, amazed at what he's doing and what he wants to do, and I'm just so, like, I'm just so amazed, and there's a well of life I see life, if, if you were to embrace what God really wants to do in your life, in your ministry, in your home, I see life springing up where there is currently death. I see, I see peace springing up where there is discord. I see love springing up where there is hate. I see fathers coming home to their sons. I see mothers coming home uh, to their daughters. I see, I see just people coming out of uh, different lifestyles and into the truth of what God has made them. And I think that if we get this right, if we take the limits of God, off of God and let God use use us the way he wants to use it, us without all the limits, I think we'll see an influx in the church, an understanding in the church that we haven't yet seen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And, and the Lord is actually he's doing great things. He's doing great things. He's saying, what you're seeing right now is a smoke, is a smoke screen. It's an optical illusion. 
but look behind the curtain and you'll see I'm turning all of that into into joy. I'm turning your morning into dancing. He's saying your reality is not an optical illusion. It's going it's going on. But he's saying, look behind the curtain. I'm working. I'm working. Don't worry about the financial crisis. Don't worry about all that. I'm still God. And I'm working. And I will continue to work. Even if I can see it, you're working. Even if I can feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Yes, God. I love you and I trust you. Okay, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Even if I can see it, you're working. Even if I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working.